looks like good a place as any to stop, set up a nice day camp. I'm gonna cook supper out here too. You gonna eat that stick? Let's go see the sticks. I gotta get my priorities straight, right? Cruiser all day pale ale to go with my steak. I'm gonna set up a hammock today. This is just my day use hammock, my Yukon Outfitters one. Uh, I'm gonna use it like a chair. I wanna use it as a place to hang out. I'm not sleeping out here tonight. I was only able to get out, it's about two o'clock now. I was only able to get out just now and I'll stay out here until dark, maybe seven or eight o'clock tonight. But just spend some time in the woods, cooking food, using my axe. It's a grand old time. <laughs> so I'm hanging the hammock kind of low because I want to use it as a seat in front of my fire. Um, so when I sit in it, I'm just a bit too low. Just uh, fix the tension. I'm only using paracord because I'm only going to be sitting in it on and off. I'm not sleeping in it by any means. And I don't weigh very much, 140 pounds top. So I know it can hurt the tree and I understand that, but the reality of the situation is I'm not setting up camp here. I'm not living here for a week. I'm in and out of sitting down on this, on, uh, uh, this hammock and this tree will be totally fine. I'll test it out. Yeah, it's a much better height now. My knees are almost at a 90. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna set my tarp up over top of it just as like a, more of a camp feeling kind of thing. My ridge line, I'm just using paracord. Um, I like to have a fixed loop in one side of my paracord, the Jolin, the Bolin, whatever other kind of fixed loop you wanna have in there. That way you don't really have to tie two uh, tie line hitches or whatever kind of knot that you're gonna tie. And I'll show you what I mean here. There's my fixed loop. I can literally just pull it through, all right? Pull the whole length of paracord through the loop and it's easier sometimes if your paracord is not like 25 feet long than tying two knots. There we go. I'm actually even gonna just put it above, hope it's in frame. There's a little knot here on the, on the piece of wood. And I'm gonna put it above that, just as a little bit more, uh, yeah, just as a little bit more protection or safety if, uh, for it not slipping, but it's not necessary. Leave it, leave it. Oh, brat. The ground is so soft, you don't really need to pound stakes in. That's kind of cool. I'm just tying a taut line hitch again on my pegs so that I can adjust it later if my tarp decides it wants to move around. Well, everything's all set up. My tarp's up, my hammock's up the way I want it. The only thing I need to tweak is I need to pull the back out of the piece of paracord going back so I get some room here because the wind is just pushing it right against me. But if I pull it back, I'll have a lot more room. Come on, let's go. So this piece of wood has obviously been laying on the ground for a while, it's rotted. It's not gonna take too much to get through it. Back up. Oh, there we go. I've been uh, liking my new Kydex sheath. I'll show you guys a little close up of it later. Really handy. Well, everything's squared away. I think I'll start getting my fire ready now. I'm gonna clear a spot in front of the leaves. I think I'll have the fire a good step away so I can protect my, my overhang. So I think I'll go grab some oak, some maple. So, oh, there was, uh, I think I spotted some wild leeks growing uh, on my way in. So if I can grab those, I'm gonna have those with my potato. Those would be good. I brought some garlic, but if I can get wild leeks in there, it'd be, be uh, fantastic. So off to do that, I guess. So here's the end of my tarp. I'm just gonna do one step out and I can have my fire here. 
It's all mud, like really, really muddy underneath. It's been raining for days, so there's no real worry. All right, half axe will travel. I'll have to find some dry wood. Hopefully some dead standing maple or oak, like I was saying, but we won't be picky. We, uh, it's all hardwood, so herb for things good. So this is a perfect tree. This is a dead standing red oak. You can see it's got a, it's shed its bark. It's got a natural check. The bark's coming off super easy. This is a great piece of wood. This is not gonna be enough to cook my steak and everything on, but for a starter piece, definitely. So we'll carry this bag boy back. There's a really nice dry dead piece of elm attached to this live elm. And ideally you'd use your saw well, my saw is all the way, 10 minute walk that way. And I already have to carry back my tripod, my ax, and the piece of wood. So I really don't feel like walking all the way there to get the saw. So we're gonna try and chop high and just be very careful as we do it. That's some dense wood, man. You have to stop crying now. You have to stop. You're just crying constantly. You're just crying constantly, Scout. You need to stop, buddy. You need to stop because it's super annoying, okay? <sighs> Boy. That worked. You gonna be all right there? Hey, you gonna make it? You got yours? Good job, do your part. Gotta remember to stay hydrated no matter how cold or hot it is. I like the idea of a hammock for for sitting in, for just chilling out in. I actually recently got a DD hammock with um, an underquilt. And I planned on doing an overnighter soon uh, in it, and I still will. But I didn't want to bring that for the day because it's a little bit more to set up this one's nice and easy, no underquilt, no nonsense, no messing around, no bug screen, all that stuff. So just easier uh, and more of a, a chill out kind of thing, I think. But I do like it. I like the idea of it. I like sitting in the hammock. So we'll see how it goes. I don't plan on, I don't plan on switching it up for actual camping trips, like backpacking or uh, canoeing trips because I've already got my ground dwelling uh, gear all laid out, all, all squared away, and it, it's cost me money to get that stuff ready, and it, I've used it, and I, I know it works and stuff. I get a good night's sleep. It weighs nothing, all that, so. The hammocks are just more for like a bushcraft overnight or a hanging out kind of thing, so. Or an imp impromptu overnight, just grab it and go. And, I, and there are other applications, the unlevel ground, you can use a hammock, all that fun stuff, so. Yeah. Back at it. Oh. Nope, leave my oak. Leave my oak firewood. This oak, this red oak, is so straight grained. Watch out, bud. Like always, you always get nice long pieces from it. It doesn't break out very often. I 
again. You know, if you notice, I'm not chopping right in front of me when I'm swinging the swinging all out like that. When I'm when I'm doing it with two hands, I don't mind doing it right in front of me. But when I'm trying to split like that, I have my my legs over to the side. Let's go back up. My legs over to the side, and I'm swinging off to the side of me. I'm actually almost hitting it with the was it the heel, the bottom, the bottom of the axe. Anyways, the edge. The bigger piece. This is the uh, the elm. Yeah, it's nice and dry inside as well. It's gonna be a good fire. I'm gonna get get it going to get it started soon. Today's a weird day. It was uh, zero degrees. Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit when I was on my way here. This scout just took off. And 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 no sun at all. And now the sun's been out on and off since uh, 3. It's now 10 after 4. So, weird, weird day. But I'm glad I'm out here. I was able to get my mom to come over to watch the kid because my wife's at work. So, like I said, I'll have supper here, go home. Maybe the kid will even be in bed by the time I get home, have some drinks with the wife tonight. Not too bad. I'm using a battle horse knife. This is my design battle horse knife. We were working together for quite a while about a design, and I just got it in the mail the other day. This is the first time I've used it. So I like it, I like it well enough. We'll see how she performs. I'm not gonna go into any detail about it, but right now, but in, in future videos, there'll be a whole bunch of detail about it, I'm sure. Maybe even a chance to get one of them. Ooh. Gotta maybe get a close up on that. You need to stop crying because you're super annoying when you cry. Stop crying, Scout. Yeah, this is uh it's working pretty well. Not too bad. Actually gonna just gonna leave these there for a minute. So all my fire prep's done, I'm gonna start the fire with my knife and my fire steel. I'm using oak shavings. That wind blew it right out, I think. The wind kicked up right as uh right as it ignited there. There we go. Knife and fire steel go away. Fire. Now that I've got my smoke generator going, I'm gonna go out and uh, collect some leaks. It's supposed to be a fire. I'm gonna go get some leaks. April 3rd today. This time of year, it's really easy to spot the leaks, 
The only other ground cover coming up is the trout lilies. And the trout lilies, although they, I guess they could be mistaken uh, for the leeks, it really only takes a little bit of knowledge. The trout lilies have spots on them that could look like uh, spots on trout, and they're not half as big. And all you have to do with the leeks is crush the leaves, and if it smells like a wild garlicky smell, then you got leeks. And they grow in bunches like this. So you can see, they're all behind me, and then there's this little patch here. They're really small still, but again, if you just break it, there's no mistaking that smell. It's like super good garlic onion smell. So now I have to just dig some up. I'm not gonna touch that big patch there. I'm just gonna take these little bits. I only need four or five. Um, it'll be more than sufficient. I'm digging down next to them and prying upwards. There they are. The bulbs really haven't matured too much yet, but that's okay. They're still good, they're still edible. That's it down in there. Yeah, there's barely any bulb right now. Oh, there they go. A little bit bigger ones here. But, yep, it'll still work. All right, just gonna give these a quick rinse. Be a little bit muddy that's no big deal i do not mind whatsoever they're not the greatest i'm not gonna lie there's only a couple little tiny pieces of bulb on a couple of them but that's okay i'm gonna chop them chop them up put them in there it'll be all good i need to make myself a plate for the steak excuse me i need to make myself a plate for the steak and a cutting board to do the uh the cutting on obviously for the the leaks and all that stuff so i'm going to split this in half this is a piece of that elm and yeah, we'll use that. Where are you? Some dense wood. One more time. Two more times. There we go. Okay, so that'll be all right. That'll be big enough. There's a little bit of funk on the side where the check was, and I definitely want to get rid of that because I want to be as sterile as possible out here. So I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. I'm, uh, can you see my thumb there? Yeah, you can. So it's, I'm not, Putting my thumb like this and chopping, not holding it like that, it's just danger waiting to happen, right? So if you kind of just hold a piece of wood like that, it's not as comfortable, but you get the gist of it after a while. And it's almost impossible, unless you really mess up, to hit yourself this way. Oh, this goat just took off. I think it was just a squirrel. He doesn't get too amped up about the squirrels. Okay, I'm cool with that. Have I said I like this hammock? Have I said I like sitting in a hammock? So, got my little impromptu cutting board. I'm going to cut my leeks probably right about there. So get rid of the leaves. Now I have a handful of leeks that look almost like a green onion. I'm dropping them left and right. Let's get rid of the, the leaves. There. Okay, so that's just gonna go next to me here for now. I've got my food bag, my Phantom X Sil Nylon Center Zip Pouch with tin foil, butter, a New York Strip steak, a potato, and some spices in the straws done up. Got some steak spice, and I got some salt and pepper as well. So. The potato is gonna get cut up, and the potato is going to go in with the leeks, and the butter, and the salt and pepper. And that's gonna go on the coals. When you're using this stuff, I've been taught shiny side in. So I'm gonna try to do this without losing my potato all over the place, with my Scandi grind wedge. <laughs>
Well, it's cutting pretty good for a scandy on a potato. Get them pretty thin. So what I want to do, I'm just going to cut them all thin, all the same size, as much as possible thin. Um, so it cooks a little bit faster. I'm, I'm famished, as it were. I've got my potatoes all cut up. I need to get my butter onto them. I'm going to use my finger because it's almost frozen. And then my leeks. I actually am going to cut my leeks up into smaller pieces, I believe, so I can have more bites. More leeks per bite, I guess. All about the leeks, if you haven't noticed. All about the leeks. Not too shabby. Now the flatter you can get your package, the better. Because it'll burn or it'll cook more even and quicker and all that. So I don't really worry about the front or sorry, the first layer of tin foil. I don't really worry about getting it on perfect because I do put a second one on. But I want to leave it loose a bit so that I can mash it out, make it a little bit flat, like that. That's only not even an inch thick. Then I go with my second piece. Flatten it down again. That plane was super loud. And then we go. That will cook half an hour, half an hour at the most. <laughs> so now I got my, my New York strip, my steak. I want to put some seasoning spice on it, steak spice on it. But first, I want to give Scout some. Now listen, I'm not sleeping out here. We've only been out here since two. He doesn't even need this. I'm going to give it to him because I like him, okay? I don't starve my dog. He doesn't eat kibble when we're out here. This is a good amount of meat. He is lucky to get it. So I've got four good sized pieces. Here you go, Scout. Camera so people can see. Come on. Come on, go up, get a boy. Where did you come for? I'm going to give him all this that I cut, and then I have I took three quarters of steak. I gave him a quarter of it. Um, steak's not cheap, guys. So that's mine. I'm gonna get some seasoning on it. You don't need to see me do that. <laughs> Wait, no. Look, leave it. Good, good boy. That's it, buddy. Happy dog. <laughs> Whatever. There you go, bud. I've got my potatoes on, and I think that uh, the coals are going to be sufficient enough to cook my potatoes and my steak. So I got my little cool and rat grill. I haven't used this in a couple of years, probably. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rake some coals over underneath here, share the coals with the uh, with the potatoes, and it'll all be all good. I might I might end up eating my steak before the potatoes are done, but that's no big deal. I'll have a little two course meal going on out here. <laughs> oh, perfect. Love the sizzle. I'm calling this bad boy done. Potatoes are done too. Cleaned off my cutting board again because I was cutting that raw meat on it. 
Not that it's a big deal, it's just steak, but I, I did anyways. That's good. My little hot potatoes. Hot potatoes. I'm gonna let my steak sit for a minute. You're supposed to let your steak sit before you eat it, is what I've been told. So it'll sit for two minutes, which gives me enough time to throw these twigs on the fire. I don't even think I'll fan it. Maybe I'll just let it smoke until it com combusts. I'm in no need for, for uh, warmth. Preemptive strike, undo the pants. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this, man. This, uh, the wind is, it is a bit chilly. So I've got my schmog and a piece of Reflectix underneath my butt in here. But other than that, we're good to go. I've got my my beer for today is an all day pale ale by Cruiser, uh, Amsterdam Brewery, out of Toronto. So this one's supposed to be kind of fruity, a little pineapple juice tasting, which sounds weird, I know, but for those who drink IPAs, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Wow. Very pineapple-y. I know, I know it sounds weird, believe me. So, I'll let this steak bleed out. There we go. Oh, perfect. That's a good steak, man. That is so good. I'm just checking out the potatoes now. It's still piping hot. Oh yeah. It's so hot. Those wild leeks really kicked it up a notch. Wild leek potatoes. I'm warm in the woods on a Sunday at 5.30. I have a fire in front of me. I have a tarp above me, a comfortable hammock beneath me, my dog next to me, a good beer, a great beer. Steak, potatoes. Gonna go home to a loving wife and a kid. Blessed, blessed. So I told you guys I'd tell you a little bit more about my ax mask, my Kydex that I got here. Uh, it was made by Ron at Copperhead Outdoors. Uh, it's the same guy that did my Tomahawk ax mask, my or my Kydex for my Tomahawk. He's a cool guy, um, never knew him before, actually just sent me a message on Facebook saying I'd like to make you something. Um, made me that Tomahawk thing, went really well, went well for him and I really like it as well. It's a, it's a good piece of kit. So. He actually wanted me to send him my axe. I did that. He's fit up this this uh, Kydex perfectly to it. So he also gave me this little collar, this uh, leather collar Well, he had it. And uh, I never thought I really cared for one or used one before too many times. I never thought I had a need for it. Um, but just after using it this one time, I can see it's all scuffed up. So I imagine I am hitting my, my axe handle and just not knowing it. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's cool. It's kind of like a melding of new and old. It's got like a traditional uh, leather on the, on the Kydex as well. So he snaps and then comes out. And then the Kydex is, uh, is not traditional, it's new. And I kind of like that, the melding of the two, right? That's kind of my, my whole my whole outlook on, on camping and bushcraft and stuff, just the melding of everything together. So I really like the way it looks. Uh, he did have these, um, what the heck are they called? The same thing that you use to connect your Maxpedition to your uh, water bottles, to your backpacks, the uh, clips. I can't remember the name for, off, off the top of my head. I didn't need to use it today. It was inside my backpack today. So, But it just goes on there and you can actually clip it so it's hanging next to you on your backpack or whatever. I like it. Snug fit. Can't hear it at all. You take that leather off, comes off easy. Uh, it's a nice color, everything. So cool, very cool. Thanks Ron again. And uh, yeah, I'll put the link definitely, like I always do in the, in the description, because uh, he's an American company. He's doing it all himself out of, his, out of his garage or whatever. So support him. And he does good work, really good work.
Talk about relaxing. We got a Monte Cristo, my IPA. Sun's out, super blinding. <laughs> pack up now it's just after seven I'm losing light pretty good and uh, yeah I've done all I needed to do done all I wanted to do so it would have been a few days since I'd been out it's probably about a week since my last video and um, it's been raining and the baby's been sick so anyways lucky to get out today I'm glad I did all I'm doing now is just packing up my stuff and I'm getting out of here, so nothing really to see. Uh, you should look forward to a video from myself and my friend Mike. If you follow him on Instagram, it's uh, Morton, Mike Morton. And actually he has a YouTube channel as well, but only a couple of videos on it, I think. So Buddy Mike is coming uh, in about a week. We're gonna come to the same spot, maybe build a little natural hangout shelter um, cook some good food drink some good beers and just relax so that should be a pretty good video I don't know that I'll have any in between now and then but if not look out for that video all right guys thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one take it easy